This is a 16-dimensional free energy landscape of a fully connected neural network trained for classifying handwritten images. What you are seeing is not just an abstract mathematical object, but a concrete description of how an entire neural network organizes its internal states. The white markers in this graph represent a chain of connected, equally good global minima in that landscape. Each one of these points corresponds to a configuration of neuron activations that the network finds extremely favorable. These global minima are the most probable configurations for the values of the neurons in the network. In the language of physics, they are equilibrium states. If the network were allowed to fluctuate randomly according to its own internal probability distribution, it would spend most of its time near these configurations. Now, here is the surprising part. The majority of these configurations are such that, if we insert them back into the neural network and compute the prediction of the network exactly the same way neural networks normally predict classes, we end up predicting the correct class for the input image in the majority of trials. In other words, many different internal configurations, all energetically equivalent, still lead to the right answer. Did you know that every machine learning model, from simple regression to image-generating models like DAL-E, can be explained by a single elegant equation? If you're interested in learning machine learning in a unified way, visit our webpage at compuflare.com. This is a unique place to understand every machine learning model through one elegant equation from a physics-inspired perspective. In addition to the courses, we offer end-to-end -end intermediate and advanced projects that develop your skills, experience, and online presence, helping you land top industry roles. Visit compuflare.com and start building your data science career. The problem is that neural networks are usually considered black boxes. They transform the input layer to the output layer, but we do not really know how this transformation happens internally. As a result, we are not able to control or systematically improve the transformation. This lack of understanding can lead to safety and vulnerability issues, as well as unexpected outcomes when neural networks are deployed in real-world applications. The importance of knowing the free energy of neural networks is that, by knowing just the free energy, we can directly predict the class of images without getting into the microscopic details of how information flows from the input layer to the output layer. The benefit is not only computational, we also gain a clear picture of why the neural network behaves the way it behaves. Even more importantly, the landscape of free energy allows us to forecast potential issues before they actually occur, by identifying unstable regions, degeneracies, or unexpected symmetries in the model. In this video, we are going to peel back the layers of a neural network that recognizes handwritten digits and show that, underneath the neural net, there is a statistical mechanic system quietly at work. A hidden neuron turns out to behave like a spin half particle. A softmax classifier behaves like a spin nine halves particle. Each of these particles has a quantum mechanics probabilistic description that is mathematically equivalent to that of the neurons. By putting all these probabilities together according to the chain rule of probabilities, we construct the full probability of the entire neural network. From there, we construct the free energy equation of the neural network. We then use our recent method of visualizing high-dimensional functions to look directly into this 16-dimensional landscape. If you are interested in seeing how we construct the free energy of a neural network and how that leads to these results, this video will walk you through the entire process step by step. By the way, the code to reproduce the important images of this video can be accessed via the link in the description. Also, the full transcript of this video, including all the mathematics, can be accessed via the same link. We want to use a fully connected neural network to classify handwritten images of digits from 0 to 9. For this task, we use the MNIST dataset, which consists of thousands of digits written by different individuals. Each image in the MNIST dataset is 28 by 28 pixels. Each pixel is used as the input to one neuron in the input layer which means the input layer has 784 neurons. We add two hidden layers for the classification task. The first hidden layer has 10 hidden neurons, and the second hidden layer has 5 hidden neurons. Any hidden neuron can take only the value 0, meaning it is inactive, or 1, meaning it is active. This activation rule is known as the sigmoid activation, 
and it has an equivalent physical system that we will discuss shortly. Since the images in the data set are handwritten numbers from 0 to 9, we have 10 classes and therefore need 10 neurons in the output layer. We then use the conventional machine learning approach to train the neural network and set the optimal values of the free parameters of the model. We arrive at about 90% accuracy, which is high enough for our purposes in this video. At this point, we are interested in deriving the physics equivalent of this collection of neurons. In what follows, we first discuss the physics of different components of the network. Then, we connect everything together to build the statistical mechanics description of the entire system. So let's dive in. Since we have more than one layer, and each layer has more than one neuron, we first need to define a few labels to distinguish which neuron and which layer we are talking about. We use the superscript L to tag the layer number in the entire network. In our image classifier network, we have four total layers, so L runs from 1 to 4, expressed as. We also use the superscript K to tag the neuron K in that layer. It runs from 1 to 10 in the first hidden layer, from 1 to 5 in the second hidden layer, and from 1 to 10 in the output layer. We represent the edges in the neural network that feed into neuron K in layer L as a vector of weights, represented as the following. The first component of this vector represents the edge coming from the first neuron in the previous layer. The second component connects the second neuron in the previous layer to this neuron, and so on. Each neuron also has a free parameter called the bias, which we label B for neuron K in layer L. The state of the neurons in each layer is represented by a vector expressed as follows. In this vector, the first component refers to the first neuron the second component to the second neuron, and so on. Now let's connect physics and hidden neurons. What connects physics and machine learning is that they share the same mathematical foundation for their probabilistic description of events. From the mathematics alone, one cannot tell if we are dealing with a physical system or a machine learning system. Imagine a single particle sitting inside an external magnetic field. If the particle has spin s, the number of energy states the particle can take is equal to 2s plus 1. If the particle has spin 1 half, then there are only two energy states at the quantum level. If the particle has spin 9 halves, then there are 10 energy states. As we will see, the hidden neurons in our network correspond to spin 1 half particles, and the output layer collectively corresponds to a spin 9 halves particle. According to statistical mechanics, the probability of a particle being in one of its possible energy states is set by the energy of the particle and has the following form. Where F is the effective free energy of the single particle system. In this context, it is the inverse temperature, denoted by beta, times the energy of the particle E, expressed as follows. To connect physics and machine learning, we need to reinterpret these terms while keeping the mathematics exactly the same. In previous work, we have shown that the energy E should be interpreted as the state of the neuron. For hidden neurons, we only have two possible states, and therefore the energy takes only two values, 0 or 1, which can be written as the following. The inverse temperature beta should be interpreted as a linear combination of all the neuron states in the previous layer expressed as the following. For the output layer, the entire layer is equivalent to a particle with spin 9 halves, with 10 possible energy states from 0 to 9. These states are represented by 10-dimensional vectors, whose components are all 0 except for the one associated with the corresponding class. For example, the third class is represented by a 10-dimensional vector whose third component is 1 and all other components are 0. Therefore, for the output layer, the effective free energy has the following interpretation. Under the condition that all x sub k in layer L are zero, except for the class of interest, which is one. Inserting these new interpretations into the statistical mechanics probability, we can write the probability of the state of a given neuron in terms of the values of the neurons in the previous layer, expressed as. Where the partition function or normalization constant, is expressed as the following. This form of probability is known as the softmax function. When neurons can only take values 0 or 1, 
which is the case for the hidden neurons with spin one half, this probability reduces to what is known as the sigmoid function. Now it is time to construct the probability of the entire neural network by putting together the probabilities of all individual neurons. We do this using the chain rule of probabilities. The chain rule is a fundamental rule in probability theory that allows us to express the joint probability of several random variables as a product of conditional probabilities. For two random variables A and B, the chain rule states the following. For three variables A, B, and C, the chain rule is expressed as follows. Using this rule, the full probability of the neural network is written as follows. Converting this into the statistical mechanics format, we get the following. The effective free energy of the neural network is given by. And the normalization constant is expressed as follows. Earlier in the video, we discussed that we used conventional machine learning methods to find the optimal values of the free parameters, namely the weight vectors and the biases. To visualize the landscape of the free energy, we construct a grid of all possible states of the neurons in the network, meaning all possible configurations of neuron activations across the layers. For each configuration, we insert the values into the free energy equation and compute the corresponding effective free energy. We then visualize this 16-dimensional energy landscape by assigning an angle between 0 and 360 degrees to each configuration and plotting a bar whose height represents the negative of the free energy. We mark the global minimum with a red marker and show all other minima that are at least 95% as deep as the global minimum with white markers. We observe 271 nearly global minima in this landscape. These are equilibrium states of the network, and the network most likely lives in one of them. We also compute the distances between pairs of minima in the 16-dimensional space and observe that these minima are all connected. They form a continuous chain, or valley, where consecutive minima are separated by negligible distances. This 16-dimensional valley most likely arises from symmetries in the model. We have discussed these symmetries in the previous video on this channel. Finally, we insert all 271 spin configurations corresponding to these nearly global minima into the sigmoid and softmax functions of the neural network and predict the class of the input image. Surprisingly, the majority of these global minima configurations correctly predict the class of the input image, indicating the predictive power of the free energy without getting into microscopic details of neural networks. These global minima are all possible behaviors of the network. One advantage of this landscape is that we can immediately see all possible behaviors of the network and identify what can possibly go wrong. To clarify my point, imagine we have constructed the free energy landscape of ChatGPT. We therefore know what answers this model can return to users before they even ask their questions. The answers that are not appropriate are a few global minima that should be removed from the landscape. We need to fill up these few problematic minima in the landscape to permanently remove the bad behaviors that the model can potentially have. In other words, the free energy landscape approach will allow us to build next-generation transparent AI models. We plan to hold live chats to discuss research avenues in this direction. If you are interested, please visit our website and create a free account to stay informed. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Until the next one, Take good care of yourself.